I'm Rose and this is Carolina Hoofbeats TV and with me today is Gary Sessoms and Tina Sutton and they have an incredibly popular carriage business. So tell me a little bit about your business. Well it's called s, &S Carriage Rides mm -hmm. and we become official in 2016 and um, our main place that we work is in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh, we work for the Downtown Alliance down in Fayetteville. And we do rides with Santa at Christmas. Um, we do a once a month tour that um, tells you all about the history of downtown Fayetteville. Um, this coming season, uh, as well as last season, we'll also be doing Carowinds Amusement Park. Oh, wow. And we work for Mr. Bridger Medlin doing that. Do you rent out your carriages for other events like weddings and things? We do pretty much any event a horse can do. We'll do weddings. We are working on a hearse now so we can start doing funerals. And we do all types of events for wagon rides and grand openings, things of that nature. Okay. Cloud demonstrations. Um, we've done a lot of them in the past and our business has picked up so much with the weddings that it's kind of got to where that's the majority of what we do is weddings. Now when you do weddings, do you do them as characters or, or do you, how do you do that? I've seen we, some of your character pictures, yeah, they're so cute. We do, um, at Christmas I love to dress up and get in character and so I'm normally an elf or Mrs. Christmas. Um, we've done a uh, Beauty and the Beast where they use my Belgian to do that and I dress for that occasion. Um, Unicorn, you know, that's very popular right now. So I got a great big white, he's a gray, but he's a great big white Percheron. And so I dress up in an outfit and dress him up for the unicorn parties. So we do the characters seasonal, like Christmas, um, Halloween. Oh, mm -hmm. that's my favorite. I, I can't believe I forgot Halloween. <laughs> Halloween, I'm a witch. Right. And um, he's Dracula. Nice. And we have a little dog that does a care that goes everywhere with us. His name's Kringle, and so he's Count Kringula, and he <laughs> dresses in character too. But the kids really get a kick out of it. If you're in character and your horse is in character, um, I even have Rudolph noses for my horses. <laughs> <laughs> That's too cute. I'll, and Santa hats, they, they go all out too. So they'll be able to go downtown Fayetteville and find you guys to take rides with yep. you? What, um, where? Normally the second Saturday of every month, we are down there doing historic tours. Um, and then at Christmas, the, uh, this year it's going to be the 8th and 9th. I think it's the 7th, 8th, 15th, 16th, and 22nd. Second. We'll be, hey um, darling, And this How is one of our main characters, and as you can see, he loves to get into the You're middle beautiful. of everything. Yes, you are. But we'll be doing Santa. It's Rides with Santa, and we have a great big red hitch wagon. And Santa drives the hitch wagon, and all the kids get in the back, and he drives them through town. Oh, wow, that sounds yeah. like fun. Yeah. Hey, my name is Daniel Rayner. Numerous time qualifier to the Southern Finals Rodeo, won team ruffins across the country. I've used Mule City Feeds since I was a kid. Always great quality feed, and I use complete horse feed. It already has hay in it. If you're tired of chasing hay, then give Paul Dunn a call today at Mule City Feeds. I thank him for all the effort and time he puts into quality feed. Was the hearse what I saw in the picture at Halloween with the glass sides? Yes. That's yes. really beautiful. Yes, yes. Tell me a little bit about that. It was being used in New York and the group that had it retired from New York and went to Pennsylvania mm -hmm. to do some, to do a, a lot less, just kind of scale down some mm -hmm. and they parked it and basically let it rain on it and, and almost ruin it right and they posted it online and we went and got it and brought it back took it apart put it all back together and and straightened it out as we went that's awesome i saw the picture of it it was beautiful are you really going to use it for funerals yes that is so yes. awesome yes. i want you to exactly. bury me when i go oh, okay don't go no time soon. Okay? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> but that is so beautiful. Thank you. I love it. Um, it's been a work in progress. We've worked on it quite a while. And there's still some decorations I want to do to it that I haven't had 
you know mm -hmm. a lot of those little inlays are very expensive that you put on it yes. appliques and so little alone I a lot of hand work yeah. i'm sure yes. yeah yes. So. that's really awesome and i think that's it for all our wagons and stuff mm -hmm. well tell me a little bit about the hurricane i know you you bravely <laughs> did a, a distribution center and yes. a, a triage place so tell me a little about that experience um, it was gosh it's that's a whole story in itself um i work ems mm -hmm. we have been put on call in um we were told we'll get there and if you can get home we'll let you go home if you can't go home you stay for the duration and that's normally mm -hmm. what happens right um i'm a paramedic and been working here in duplin county for 15 years this year so we went to um the day before everything's part where the winds are supposed to pick up and everything mm -hmm. a girl that i had let use my drum horse down in wilmington she calls me frantic and the guy hadn't showed up to pick up her horses and she's got a trailer two horse tag on she has three horses and so she's going to leave my horse oh my gosh <laughs> she, and it's really not that she was bad it's just that it was a situation sure. at the last minute nobody go get it and the hardest problem i had was finding somebody to take a draft mm -hmm. i mean and they are they're destructive they're, i'm sure they're a lot bigger than, you know sure so they're normal but and people are scared down. of them yeah and they mm -hmm. are and so found this wonderful lady in Greenville, she, um, Greensboro, and she took every one of mine, even when she didn't have a stall for them, she took a pasture and put in her, and um, so her name, her place is Providence Farms, and so I was so tickled when I finally got to come home, I told him, I said, we got to do something, <laughs> and he said, what? I said, we got to do something, and he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I don't know. Let me see. Let me see if Jamie needs help, the girl to help me. Let me see if I can help them mm -hmm. back. And that's mm -hmm. okay. Jamie Pierce, she is with the Worldwide Equestrian Evacuation Team. Mm -hmm. They are skilled, trained um, equine evacuation mm -hmm. team people. They go all over the world. Matter of fact, right now, I just talked to her yesterday. We've become good friends over all this. Bless her heart. She, she has her hands full. I know. But, um, they're dealing with California fires right mm -hmm. now. They recently just got through with Florida. And um, so I contacted her and I told her, I said, you, I, you probably don't remember me, but you helped me move my horse. I said, I want to do something. What, what do y'all need for mm -hmm. North Carolina? And she said she was looking up a staging site. I said, well, I would give you my place, but it's nothing. I said, it's just an old barn and a bunch of pasture. And... Um, <laughs> but it's dry and it's on high ground. Yeah, it, Makes it worth quite a bit. <laughs> literally two miles that way was underwater. Yeah. We were, Magnolia was an island. Mm -hmm. um, Beulahville, where I had to stay at work, was an island. So um, she said, anything, we can make it work. We desperately need to get a place set up. And so I talked to Gary. Gary and his mother run, has rental properties. So I asked him, I said, can we do it? And he said, yeah. So he actually opened up a building. That was really so nice. Could, Thank you. <laughs> so we could put supplies in it, store supplies. He opened up a rental property that they were actually going to sell, put power and water on it and everything, so anybody that come to help us could stay there. Um, and we basically took donations. And when it got to where people couldn't make it us, we'd make it to them. My father let me use a boat. He, he has oh, wow. a boat. So we would actually go out and distribute stuff while we could and when we could um, and from there we made numerous screens oh my goodness it's, it's been wonderful it's really the rural american lifestyle it's how we work it's how we play it's how we learn and how we enjoy the finer things in life how we take care of our animals and tend to the land. It's a way of life. Has been for hundreds of years. Now there's a whole new way for rural America to watch TV. I got to tell you guys that as Tina's friend on Facebook, when people were flooded and they had lost their trucks and their cars and they couldn't come and get any supplies, Tina and Gary made deliveries to their homes since the inception of the hurricane, I guess, and probably still would if they needed help. So they're both an amazing couple. So 
You survived all that. Yes, we did. Um, and the needs, they're, they're still here. Yes. But they're, California is a critical situation right now as well as Florida still. Um, it takes several years to get over this stuff. People don't. You know, a couple of weeks after it, and people start kind of moving on. Mm -hmm. But the people that have been devastated, they don't. I know. It takes years. So we still stick around and help out when we can. We ain't going nowhere naturally. We live right here. But that's been our goal is to help them as we could. Well, you've been wonderful saviors to many people throughout the storm. I have no doubt about that. I've seen your work. So what's on the list for you guys next? Next is... Dickens Day in Fayetteville. Okay. It's a, a huge event where people come dressed in character, like from the Charles Dickens novel, oh, wow. the Christmas Story. And that will carry us from there into Carowinds, and we'll be there through January. Awesome. Yeah. I didn't realize Carowinds was open at Christmas time. So. It is. It's yeah. called Winterfest. They just started last year, and... Um, Mr. Bridger Medellin, he owns the um, Southern Breeze Carriage Company, mm -hmm. and he does downtown Charlotte tours. We're really good friends with him. He's been kind of like a mentor to us on telling us what you need to do and how you need to do it as far as carriage business. He's been a great help. Listen to us. Um, we go up there and drive for him, and, and we take our horses and carriages and stuff and, and work up there and just it's wonderful i love it because i get to dress up I sure mean, every night i'll have a hat on i'll have little snowflake stickers on my mm -hmm. face and i just love it i get all into it oh the only thing better than riding in the carriage would be to be up in some costume i, I mean that's every girl's dream I <laughs> for sure you know, the <laughs> i know really an excuse to, to wear an evening gown mm -hmm. <laughs> oh i love it and so mm -hmm. we'll have that we're still going to do a couple of events um we're hoping to send you a wagon team to your event which is december 8th right right yeah that's right so we're hoping to we've got a lot of shoes to fill i know but we're hoping to get them filled that'll yeah. be awesome i hope that you can be there and if you can't i'll understand but well i'm working on it. that's the great that's great can possibly do it so. good good <laughs> that'll be awesome all right um and really that's from there, January, we die, okay? Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> it's called down. You hide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 When we first met Bridger, he told us, um, we talked about Christmas coming up, and I was like, I want to do any parades you don't want to do. I love stuff like that. And, and he said, okay. He said, honey, you just wait. January, you're going to die. And he was right. He mm -hmm. says, you don't sleep through December. Mm -hmm. He <laughs> says, you decorate in October, November for your Christmas because through December you do nothing but work and it is, it's truly, so you have to love it. Absolutely. You have to eat, sleep and breathe it and love it and we do. So. Absolutely. Well, that's awesome. Well, we look forward to seeing you on the streets of Fayetteville and hopefully in Lumberton in December. Okay. I hope to be there. All right. Now, how can people reach you to book an event? Um, well, Gary, you can do the... We have a website. We have snscarriagerise.com. Okay. Uh, we're also on Facebook and Instagram. And other than that, they can call us. Okay. Very good. <laughs> so anybody has a January wedding, you better hurry them up quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes, please. We get booked. Uh, we've got a 2020 wedding. I mean, wow. That's people, awesome. They plan ahead. Yes, so they that's do. That's good. Very nice. Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you guys this morning. Thank oh, you for so spending nice. some time. Hi, I'm Vicki from Double L Tack and Feed in Coast, North Carolina. If you're looking something to wear out on the town, to the rodeo, or just to hang out or to work out in the barn, we can get you dressed for the occasion. We have all the major brands with a lot of styles to choose from in various sizes. So come in and check out our selection of men's and ladies' clothes. So the next time you need an outfit, stop by and see us at Double L Tack and Feed. We're located in Coates, North Carolina on Highway 55, one mile outside of Coates between Coates and Andrew. We have new arrivals all the time, so check back often. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. So with me now is Mark Loden. And Mark, I understand that you have a strong background here in the Love Valley community. I tend to think so. I mean, I, I try to do the best I can to help the town and, and the people living in it. So. Right. How long have you been here? Uh, at least 20 years been coming up here, 20 years or better. Uh, found it through some friends and uh, come up here and instantly fell in love with the place. It's a place that was unique and was kind of a lifestyle that I liked. 
Do you live up here full time or? No, I live down the road. We got an apartment upstairs. You know, mm -hmm. I stay here and been contemplating moving my permanent residence up here. Right. Uh, but I got young kids, so I don't like moving their schools. So, sure. So I kind of keep both places right now. That makes sense. And so you you are a part owner of the bar. Yes. And this is Pearl's place. Shelby. Shelby's, Shelby's place. place. Shelby's place. I'm Shelby sorry. Caldwell. He he lives in South Carolina. He's he bought this place off of Jack and Linda. I guess seven years ago, some seven, eight years ago, mm -hmm. uh, Jack, who used to have a place, was Jack's place. He died, and then his wife kept it for a couple of years, and then she decided she just wanted to get out of it. So Shelby bought it and opened it up. So is Love Valley open seven days a week, or is it a weekend it's, destination? Or it's open. I mean, the town's open to the public any time, but mm -hmm. like the shops and things like that, are, it's more of a weekend thing there. I mean, it's got its own town council, right. own mayor. Uh, it's a full function in town. Okay. Um, so Thursday is when things open up and then Saturday and Sunday. And of course this time of year is kind of off year. Mm -hmm. uh, prime season between like Easter and Halloween. So. Right. All right. Well, let's take a walk around town and you can tell me about the different structures and give us a tour. So we're here under the iconic Love Valley sign. And when you come to Love Valley, there's, there's no cars beyond this point. So tell us a little bit about how that came to be. Well, Andy, you know, it was years ago, he wanted a cowboy town, and so he created it that way. So, of course, he didn't want the cars in town. He wanted it to be a place where the horses could, you know, park up, so to speak, and mm -hmm. you could do your shopping and things like that uh, without spooking horses. We wanted right. to keep it the, the authentic Western kind of look. So. Okay. So when you go through these arches, you step back in time to the 1800s. Right. That's what we're trying to get the feel. All right. And that was, I think that was Andy's vision. That's what he wanted you to be, feel like you step back in time. And, and that's what we're trying to redirect back to. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's take a look. So, Bork, tell me a little bit about this building behind us. This is, was Andy Barker's home, the mm -hmm. mayor of Love Valley. He's the one who had the vision of creating Love Valley. Uh, as a kid, he wanted a cowboy town. Mm -hmm. And so, he, as he got older, he built him a cowboy town. And this was his home. Uh, you know, originally, the town and everything was down in 1953, 54 is when he moved up here and started creating the town. And it was all originally down at the arena in that area uh, and they lived in a building down there mm -hmm. originally kind of like a shack no mm -hmm. indoor plumbing or nothing for years but in around 1964 is when they moved town up here and a lot of the single structures single level structures was buildings that were down there mm -hmm. he moved those up here and that's when he built his home here and this was his home for years and years him miss eleanor they served many a guest here they fed many people uh some uh presidents wow governor stuff i mean a lot of influential people uh and like I said, he never met a stranger. And as many times they'd break bread with a bunch of people in here. You know, everybody was welcome. So. Right. Very nice. Now, when was this originally, when did Love Valley start originally? About 1953, 54. All right. Well, let's move on and see what else is here. Like I said, that's, that's Cindy. She lives there. Beautiful Hi. place. Oh, thank you. Are you thinking about a career with horses? I love this. We love this. I love this. I love this. I love this. We know. You'll love it too. Okay, so tell me a little bit about this building. Ice this, cream shop? Yeah, this is uh, Tori Barker, uh -huh. uh, Andy's granddaughter. Right. She runs a little ice cream gift shop it's called Moonshine Gifts. Uh -huh. Years ago, this was a hotel. Okay. It was a Love Valley Hotel. It, you know, you had rooms, you had a hallway, you go in steps that went upstairs, and you had rooms on, on both sides. But later on, they kind of made it into apartments and mm -hmm. with a storefront. So. That's really cool. There's yeah, like some really interesting cool. stuff in I there. I love the history of it. You know, yeah. And when you go up here, you can kind of still see the way the footprint was laid out and say, okay, I can see this was where a room was here and you had a room here and then you mm -hmm. had the public restroom that everybody used. So right. When you go in, it's, it's real cool. So behind us is Shelby's place. This I understand is where all the action is. Here lately, <laughs> uh, unfortunately with some tough times, it's come some uh, you know, business closures and things like that. So this is our one bar saloon. Uh, you know, Friday nights we'll have some karaoke and line dancing Thursday nights. Saturday nights we have bands. Mm -hmm. This is the, the hot spot. Uh, it used to be Jack's place right. years ago. Right. Uh, before that, it was basically just uh, kind of a small structure that straight up and down. Had an apartment upstairs and a little storefront with stalls out back. And Jack 
built on, built on, built on, and kind of built it over the cliff and made it into a nice little honky-tonk, uh, good yeah. dive bar. Yeah. So we get people to visit and come hang out from, you know, I've, we got signatures on the wall. I don't know if you saw it in there earlier. Yeah. People sign the wall when they come in. That's the biggest thing. People want to sign the wall, and they look at their names when they come back. If they, they haven't been there in three years, they go in and look for their name. Oh, that's cute. And we've had people from South Africa, England, Brazil, um, and they come from all over. And that's names all over the wall from all over the, the, the world, you know. Wow. Which, which I think is unique about that it. It is unique. That's really cool. Tell me about this one. That is a... Uh, Tell us a little bit about this. This is uh, Muley Le Muley's Leather. Uh -huh. uh, leather shop. Uh, he's actually the town preacher at the Presbyterian Church over here. He's the preacher at the Presbyterian Church. He opens it up. He's typically open all week long. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe for an hour or two, he comes up and does some work. Then he leaves, but he's open on the weekends. Uh, this used to be a big tack shop. Uh, mm -hmm. Eddie White, he was real popular around here. People loved him. He had a hilltop tack shop and this was one of his little tack places. He really didn't ever care if he made money. He just loved the town and that, it was his hangout spot for the weekend. I right. guess to get away from the missus. Right. He loved to come up here and you go in there and if you catch him when the wife wasn't around, how much is this? And you'd always get a good deal. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. And you know, and that's 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 one of the history things I love about it. Up is Love Valley Horseman Association. They're the ones who lease the trails first to ride on. Because okay. of course all the trails don't belong to the town. It's trails that have been leased properties all throughout the woods. Somebody's got to lease them first to ride on, so the hunters don't lease. If sure. we don't lease them, then the hunters lease them and then you can't ride on them. Yep. And then uh, the very next little building is, she's just like, oh, she's got some tack in there and it's kind of a little whatnot shop, some gifts and things like that that you can pick up. Mm -hmm. So, But like I said, these were part of the original buildings that were down at the arena, mm -hmm. the original town. And uh, when they moved everything up here, these were like the first buildings he brought up. One of them, actually, I think at one time was a Belks. Okay. Actually had a Belks up here. Wow, that's amazing. That was, like I said, years ago. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, these, and then like I said, places like Shelby's, the two-story buildings and, and the general store, mm -hmm. those were the ones that were built after everything was moved up here. And they just kind of built onto the town. So. Okay. Another general store. Tell me a little about that. General store, like I said, uh, been there for a while. Various different owners. The original owner... You know, back when I first started coming over, her name was Brenda Hartness. She made a killing there. Mm -hmm. Predominantly, the biggest part of her business would be at 3 in the morning. Right. When the bar let out, that place would be packed. Everybody <laughs> eating. Yep. Uh, that, that was back in the day when the bars were really packed all the time. Uh, you'd be lying down the sidewalk trying to get in the spurt. But, uh, and there's, like I said, some parking Who would have thought that? I mean. Yeah. And she lived. You know, she would, she'd come up on the weekend. She stayed upstairs and then run the, run the uh, general store downstairs. And, you know, she would sell... Different things there too. Sometimes they, at one time there was pool tables in there you know, mm -hmm. for the kids to play video games, uh, and that's what that last building there at one time was all little arcade for the kids. Right. This building right here. Right. It, it was an arcade at one time, and uh, okay. that's where all the kids hung out. This one here was like a little uh, little storefront up front where you buy like postcards and different things like that memorabilia from Love Valley, but in mm -hmm. the backside was an apartment. And that's what a lot of them, even with Jack and Linda, they didn't live here all the time, but they would come up on the weekend and stay the whole weekend. Sure. And, you know, they, it was equipped. You know, there's four bedrooms up there now. Right. And, uh, you know, they'd stay there for the weekend and that then Sunday evening, pack up and go back home, you know. And then, right. So. Silver Spur, what is that? Silver Spur is like our big dance hall. Okay. It's like the biggest building up here, the town, the, the cornerstone, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And it, which is sad why it's closed now. I mean, because it did bring a lot of business in here. Uh, and of course, the end building there, there's like a little metal roof there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was called Chicken Coop. Okay. It's like an outside bar. Okay. And in the summertime, you you couldn't put no more people in there. That's right. where everybody wanted to hang out in the Chicken Coop. Right. You'd have a lot of locals get up here with their instruments and they just start picking mm -hmm. and playing, and everybody's singing along and having a good time. And they actually had it's cool because the trail right there beside it goes down the hill. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see there's like a little drive up window. Years oh, wow. ago, you could ride up on your horse. Get That's you a beer cool. or a six pack or something, throw in your saddlebags, keep on riding. Wow. It's a cool little drive up. <laughs> That's window, so, so cool. <laughs> so how many how much trail is there up here to ride? Miles and miles. Now, like I said, unfortunately we're dealing with some issues on some landowners with some trails. Uh, we're trying to get those ironed out because like I said the horseman association leases some of them. Well mm -hmm. property owners have changed and new property owners come in. So, you know, so they're wanting to go up on some of the leases sure. and things like that. So they're in negotiation with that. But but I mean really there's trails that go I mean, you can ride through these hills for three days and not hit the same trail if you knew them. Right. You're with a local. There's a gentleman named, by the name of Butch Adams. That's how I learned a lot of the trails. He'd been coming up here since he was just little. And when he'd come up here with his dad, he'd just say, the only rule is be home by dark. Right. And he would be gone all day long, come, up, come home at dark. You yeah, know? And, yeah. And that was, that, 
and that's how he learned the trails. And 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 he's not he's the type of person he ain't scared to trailblaze either. You yep. go through if you can't got a trail, he'll make a trail. That's he'd cool. Cut through there. This building here uh, has been various different things, but a re- long time ago it was the jail. Mm-hmm. This was the jail that if you got acting crazy and stupid, just like in, in Andy Griffith's day. Yep. You know there was a gentleman named it Joan off. Ponder. He was the sheriff up here for a long time, and he was like one of those world's strongest man competitors. Wow. Had a neck on him probably. Gosh. Big, huge man. And there's actually down at the hardware, the old har- and his old hardware store, which is down the road a little ways, uh, there's a set of golf clubs in there that he would screw to his mouth, and he'd play a whole round of golf with nothing but his neck. Oh, my God. He pulled tractor trailers with his teeth. Wow. Uh, pulled, uh, picked up big engine blocks with his teeth. I got some pictures upstairs of him picking up a big pumpkin and, I think, engine block with his teeth and stuff. But... The old iron bar cell still in there. That's uh, wild. Yes, yeah, a single little iron bar cell. And yeah. Like I said, he would take you in there and you'd sleep it off next morning. But a lot of times if Andy took, if Andy took you in there, you could go home after church. There you go. You go in there. Get a little lesson. So, so you always try to wait till Saturday night to get in trouble because you won't get in trouble on Friday night because then you stuck in there and had to wait till Sunday to go to church. <laughs> so, you, so that was the thing. I was like, we go get in trouble, get in trouble on Saturday night. Right. Now, when people come to Trail Ride, is there a place to get maps of the trails and, and instruction? Where would they do that? We have, at the bar and the restaurant, we have some uh, Low Valley Trail maps. Now, they're, they're older maps that were drew out by hand. You know, they mm-hmm. went up, and they did it the right way, and, and you're not going to get lost if you have one. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's got old Jack's Place advertisements on it. We still have a bunch of those. They're currently right now working on trying to find them because when they did all this GPS mapping and everything for the forestry and mm-hmm. service and all that, Tori, I think it is, uh, she's working on trying to get a hold of that to make a more mm-hmm. precise map uh, with the GPS and all that to where it's more. Yeah, most people do it on their phones nowadays, right. for so sure. She's working on doing that to make the map better, but we do have maps. Okay. And we have brochures that we give out to tell you the events, uh, you know, all year long from, you know, April to Halloween is basically like our, our prime seasons. And it, you know, it tells you when the rodeos come, when the chili cook-offs come, mm-hmm. and when we're doing the Frontier Days, Pioneer Days and all that. So. Very nice. Well, it, it looks like a great place to spend a weekend or a, or, a, or a lifetime. Hi, I'm Robert, and this is Ruger. Think about all the knots that trail riders and horse campers need to tie. Knots to tie horses to trees. Knots to tie horses to trailers. Knots to tie to... I don't know what else. Hi, this is Minnie. We're going to look at a knot that I use on a regular basis to tie inside the trailer. You may have heard it referred to as a highwayman's hitch, a getaway knot, a bank robber's knot. The beauty of this knot is it dissolves very quickly. So let me show it to you. All you need to do is take your lead, make a loop. It's technically called a bite. Take that bite, run it over whatever you're hitching to. This knot works great on hitch rails. Take it to the left of your standing end or pony end and the working end of your lead. The working end needs to be in the middle. Take that working end, run it over and around that first loop or bite. Take it over and around the second to form a second loop or bite. Stick it through the first. Now you're going to take the pony end and snug this up. This is the highwayman's or bank robber's knot. It works great and it dissolves in a snap whenever you're ready to leave the trailer. Let's try that one more time. We have our pony end of the lead, our free or working end of the lead that we formed into a bite or a loop. We'll put that loop over whatever we're gonna tie to, and then we're gonna take our free or working end of the lead, wrap it over and around the bite, and then over and around the pony end of the lead. We'll form that into its own bite that will stick through the first, and then we'll use a pony end to tighten it down. And you're done. This is Ellie, and we're gonna look at a knot that I use on a regular basis, especially at the trailhead when I'm tying to the trailers. I also use this knot when I'm packing and I'm pulling multiple pack animals. To make this knot, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a loop or a bite in my lead, I'm going to run that bite through the tie loop of my trailer. On the pony end, I'm going to roll the lead up, put that bite through, and I'm done. All this is is a half hitch on a bite. It's super easy to tie. It's super simple. And when I'm ready to go, pull it down, 
and hit up the trail. And one more time. Make a loop or a bite, shove it through your tie ring, make a half hitch on the pony end of the lead, shove that bite through, snug her down, and you're done. Ruger and I both appreciate your watching and we hope this helps with your trail riding and horse camping adventures. Hi, my name is Dr. Kim Crivet with North Star Veterinary Hospital and this is Dr. Sarah Robertson. And we are your equine veterinarians here at North Star Veterinary Hospital. And what I'd like to talk to you today is about vaccinations and how important they are. We vaccinate for Eastern, Western, Tetanus, and West Nile as one vaccine group. The second one would be equine herpes virus, EHV, and the third would be rabies. Now, we consider a horse that has not been vaccinated in the last six months to be naive, meaning that it does not have any memory of any vaccines. So if you have just received a horse and don't know its vaccine history, or they said, oh, it's been up to date on vaccines, but we don't know the date, it's better to vaccinate them now and again in three weeks. Then your horse will be, have full immunity for six months. If you buy your vaccines from a big box store, you are, do not know how those vaccines arrived there, if they arrived in the proper temperature and if they've been handled properly. So this is why we recommend that you get your horses vaccinated by us here at North Star Veterinary Hospital by your equine veterinarians, Dr. Sarah Robertson and myself, Dr. Kim Crivet. Thank you very much. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching today's episode on SNS Carriage, and I hope that you'll call them up and book your next event with them. Thank you for watching. <music>